Welcome to Kampala Bible Revelation Church, located at Makerere 1, Okubida Zone. Pastor Hani Mutukiriza and other servants of God welcome you to a ministry based on the Word of God. We have a covenant with God for placement and multiplication according to Ezekiel 37 verse 26 to 28. Welcome to our Sunday services which impact believers with transformational revelations from the Word of God. Our Thursday midweek service is a series of teachings equipping believers with practical skills from the Word of God. Testimonies of God's goodness abound. You can also join our Doers of the Word Bible Institute where God's children have been ground into God's Word and empowered with a practical approach to transformation both spiritually and physically, totally free of charge. We are located at Makerere 1, Mukubida Zone near Makerere Business Institute along Sapaloka Guaro. You are welcome. Running with the power of Atony. What does this mean? A general power of Atony gives power to a person, organization, who is referred to as an agent, to act in his or in her behalf, to transact any form of business, to do whatever someone has instructed such a one. To do so, you become an agent. You are actually a representative of that person. Bless the name of Jesus. We are talking about running with the power of attorney of the name of Jesus. That Jesus gave you His name and instructed you to act in His behalf. If you can believe it, I may hear your good amen. Right from the Old Testament, we find that God used to come and send people, but he always gave them his name. A very good example we have is in Exodus, Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3 and verse 5, Exodus 3 and verse 13. God was sending Moses to go to Egypt and get the children of Israel out from there and take them to the promised land. And Moses said unto him, verse 13, Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? Isn't that so interesting? Of all things, is that, is that what they should ask? Then Moses said, What shall I say unto them? God said that Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thou shalt, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. I am that I am. I can be that you want me to be. I will be whatever you want me to be. I will do whatever you want me to do. That's what it means. I am that I am. I'll be bread to you. I'll be water to you. I'll be protection to you. I'll be healing to you. I'll be peace to you. I'll be joy to you. I'll be love to you. I am that I am. I am that whatever you want me to be. That's what it means. That's, that's the name he gave to Moses. Go and tell the children of Israel. I am has sent me. That means God operates by his name. God operates by his name. He operates by his name. Not by your prayers. Not by your commitments. Not by your sacrifices. He operates by his name. By his name. That's the Old Testament. And just open everyone. That's why we find names like Jehovah Jireh, he gave it to Abraham, Jehovah Nisi, he gave it to, to Gideon, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Ra, Jehovah Rofeka, Je Jehovah Shikenu, Jehovah Shama, Je all those names, he used to give them to the people he was sending. So everyone he sent, he gave him a name. Isn't that very interesting? So when we come to the New Testament, we must find out whether Jesus was 
sent with a name. And when we find that he was sent with a name, then we'll be careful to look at that name and see what it really means to us. When he said to Moses, I am that I am, tell the children of Israel, I am has sent me, the children of Israel understood that if he's I am, then he can provide anything that we want. So while they were in Exodus and they had no water, he gave them water from a rock. He did not wait for them to go down the valley and then dig a pond from there. They were high up in the mountain and still they got water from a rock. The hardest thing on this planet produced something flowing. It may happen to someone here. Amen. Well, the Lord is good. Let's go to the New Testament. Bless his holy name. The New Testament, uh, of course, you all know it begins with the birth of Jesus, but let's go to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 and verse 21. Bless the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 2 verse 21 says, and when, the, and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. He was called Jesus after eight days, but that name came before he was even conceived. God operates by his name. This name came before Jesus was even conceived in Mary's womb. Isn't that surprising? And isn't that interesting? There must be something about this name. Don't you think so? Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9, I know you know this scripture. It says, wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Wow. That name which came before he was even conceived is above every other name. Why? What is it about Jesus that he gave him such a name? Bless the name of Jesus. Why? Verse 10 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The more you confess it, the Father is glorified. The more things bow down to that name, it is the Father who is glorified. There must be something about that name which is very interesting indeed. Now, don't forget again that God operates by his name. Amen? What is it about this name? Don't forget again, we have been given this name. We have given the power of attorney of the name of Jesus. That I can do something in his name. And it should be like it is himself doing it. Well, go with me to John chapter 5. I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name... Him you receive. I cast it in the name of Jesus. I refuse it. Jesus said, this name is not my name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus said, this name is not my name. This is my father's name. Then who are you? Ah, I'm called by my father's name. It's like you fathering a child and you give it all your names then they begin to wonder so who is who well, what's the name of your child and they say he is called Haning Mutu Kiriza. but that's your name said, yeah I've given it to my son Jesus that name is the name of the father in that name is I am that I am 
In that name is Jehovah Shalom. In that name is Jehovah Jireh. In that name is Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Say. All those names are in that name, Jesus. I know he's the son of God, but he had the father's name. Go with me to John 10. John 10, verse 25. John chapter 10, verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believed not. The works that I do. In whose name? In my father's name. Jesus is not his name. That is his father's name. Something is breaking loose here. Something awesome is breaking loose in this place. He said, the works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. That I'm not doing anything in my own power. I cannot just prophesy. I can't just prophesy deeper. I can't just go and heal the sick. I can't just go and cast out devils. I'm operating by a name. And this is not my name. This is the Father's name. Wow. So every time you hear the name Jesus, we are not talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We are talking about the Almighty God. Every time you say the name Jesus, you are actually invoking the Father of Jesus. I wish I had a better amen. I wish I had a better amen. Now, is it true that Jesus gave us his father's name? And if he did, then you will discover that whatever he did, you can do. Because whatever he did, he did whatever he did in the name of the father. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray and said, when you pray, say, our Father, who art in heaven. Then he said, hallowed be your name. Which name was this? Jesus. Don't forget, this name is the name that is above every name. So this must be the name of God himself. I'll ask you kindly to forget for a while where this name has been used in vain. But this is a power-packed name. This is a glorious name. This is a wonder-working name. This is a miraculous name. It's a miracle name. And it's a miraculous name. Bless the name of Jesus. I will ask you kindly to forget for a while those who simply speak out the name of Jesus. Now, are you surprised that he even said that many shall come and say, we cast out devils in your name. How can you, how come you are shutting us out? And say, I don't know you. Is it true that there are people today who simply speak the name of Jesus and miracles happen, yet he doesn't know them? The answer is yes. The answer is Yes. That is, the name has power. The very power of God. Even when you don't know him. I think that's very interesting indeed. They will come to me and say, we cast out devils and we even prophesied. And whatever we prophesied came to pass in your name. Say, I don't know you. This place is for those who I know. As for you, I don't know you. Yes, you use my name and I don't deny it. He, he, he didn't say that I would deny that you ever used my name. No, he said no. Yeah, you used it. But you, I don't know you. Why? Because this name is a power pack name. Wouldn't you be so angry at yourself when others who even don't know him use it and miracles happen and you just speak it and nothing happens? Wouldn't that be an insult? If someone who has no relationship at all with God invokes the name of Jesus and things happen 
and you, you are his child. You speak the name of Jesus, nothing happens? Isn't that an insult? A big one, thank you. Bless the name of Jesus. Oh, something's happening here this morning. Amen. You have to change your mind. Can I hear your good amen? amen? You have to leave that level where you are right now of knowledge about that name and go higher right now. In Jesus' name. Things must begin to happen in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, that's why some of us think that there are those who are so close to this name that when they speak that name, things must happen and not us. Isn't that an insult again? Someone has just insulted you. Now, did Jesus give us his name? Go with me to John 14. John 14. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. John 14 and verse 12. Verily, verily, or oh, truly, truly, or oh, most assuredly, or oh, amen, amen. It can mean all that. Very well, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Oh, really? Is it not for the chosen few? And greater works, greater than whose? Greater than whose? I don't hear you. Greater than whose? Greater works than the works of Jesus. <laughs> Greater works than this shall he do. Why? Because I go unto my father, the one who gave me the name. I'm going back to the one who gave me the name. So, where are you going to leave your name? Verse 13. And whatsoever. <laughs> Some of us have read these verses so many times that we've gotten used to it and actually are sick of them. Because they don't mean anything to us. But your eyes are opening this morning. Amen. If you believe in shout out, good amen. amen. And whatsoever. Now when he says whatsoever, what does that mean? Everything. Anything. Everything. Anything. Everything. Whatever is not included in anything is included in everything. Now, don't doubt in your heart. Because he has said, whatsoever, you shall ask in my name. That will I do. Will. I have no option. He did he not say that I may do. He said, I will do it. He said, I will do it. Can you imagine what you've just asked for in his name? He will do it. He said, he said that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The one he gave the name. When we pray in that name which he gave him, he's glorified. Verse 14, he said, if you shall ask anything. This one was whatsoever you shall ask. Now here he comes and says, if you shall ask anything in my name. He said again, I will do it. Did he say when they pray for you in my name? Who was he telling? He was telling his disciples. He was saying, no, I'm going away. But whatever you shall ask, whatsoever shall ask in my name. I'm going away. But if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. What an assurance. He gave us the power of attorney of the name of Jesus. We have every right. By the way, a power of, of attorney can be verbal or written. If it's verbal, it's just as powerful. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I'm, uh, I, I hope I'm not encroaching on. If it's verbal, it's as powerful as a written one. Jesus gave us the power power to use his name as himself uses it. Whom are you going to blame for your lack? Whom are you going to blame for your poverty? Whom are you going to blame for your failures? My family. Which family? I thought you got a name. There is a name that you are given. 
you are in a family that has a name. It has one name. This, this whole family has one name. <laughs> and that name is Jesus. Your family no longer counts. Actually, when, you, when he gave you his name, you lost your name. Oh, all right. Do you want to use your name again? Can, you, can I cast out a devil in the name of Hanning? The devil, the devil said, hold on, I've never heard of that name. Which name is that? And before you know it, you are in pieces. But when I say, in the name of Jesus, out! That, that name I know, that name I know. He will bow down and say, Jesus Christ is Lord, and I'm leaving this place today. I'll never come back here. I wish I had a better amen. amen. We have been given, Jesus has given us his name. We have the power of attorney of the name of Jesus. You can transact business in his name. You can make profits in his name. You can build a family in his name. You can build big buildings in his name. You can make a mark on this planet in his name. I didn't hear a better amen. I didn't hear a better amen. amen. John 16, 23. So when he said baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which, which name is this? Jesus. That those who will stand, there is a name of the Father, then there is a name of the Holy Ghost, then there, there is a name. No, it's one name, Jesus. Once you are baptized in the name of Jesus, that is it. That is it. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we might be saved. Neither is there salvation in any other. <laughs> There's only one name. There's only one name. There's only one name. John 16, 23, and in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Is he throwing us out? No. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it. He will give it to you. He will give it. Now, something, if you read carefully in John 14, he was saying, whatever you, sh you shall ask, I'll do it. Whatever you shall ask in my name, I'll, if you ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. Now here he's saying, you don't even need me to do it, he will do it. That maybe I may be busy doing something else, but if you ask in my name, the Father will do it. I may not, I may not appear in that place, but as long as you have asked, in my name, the Father, the Father. Who is the Father? God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, the owner of all things, the Lord of lords, the King of kings. If you say in the name of Jesus, the Father moves into action. We shall have a better amen. amen. We shall have a better amen again. <laughs> he said, in that day shall ask me nothing, very very I say unto you, whatsoever shall ask me. The Father in my name, He will give it to you. Then He said, 24, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, because He was supplying everything while He was with them. He was supplying everything. So they never needed to ask while Jesus was there. Have you seen that? He said, I have not had anyone here ask anything from the Father in my name, as long as I've been with you. <laughs> Can you imagine that Jesus was with his disciples and they never needed to ask the Father anything because he was supplying all things. Wow. Why are locally the people who lack most the devil is a liar? Why, why do some pastors appear as if they are the owners of the name of Jesus? Because we have made them think so. That you yourself, you cannot approach the Father. Someone else has to approach him for you. Better change your mind right now. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Then he said, ask and you shall receive. That your joy 
may be full. Even God knows that when you, when you, have, when you lack, your joy is not full. Even God knows that. So whatever you need, God knows that you need it and he wants to supply it and all he's waiting is for you to ask. You see the simplicity of that? It can be easily abused. It sounds so simple that it can be easily abused by some of us who are complicated. Some of us who are educated. We understand things in deep deep fashion. We want things which are deep. Those who want things which are deep. This sounds so simple that it's they are likely to abuse it. You mean just to ask in his name? Just to ask? Yes, that's what he said. Just ask. Throw your, your education and your experience and all those other things, your, your religious mentality, and ask. Plainly, just ask. Pastor doesn't know that every time we pray and we cry to God through his name. No! I don't know what you know. This time you are asking because he has said. Did I say all the way to verse 25? These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day, verse 26, you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. So we are not asking in his name so that Jesus may go and ask the Father. So no. Once you pray in my name, oh God have mercy on those religions, you know, bless his own name. I don't want to go into that right now. For the Father himself loves you. Because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and I'm coming to the world again. I leave the world and I go and go to the Father. And all he left us was his name. You can use it this morning. And miracles are going to happen. You can use the name of Jesus this morning. And miracles are going to happen. I'm saying that your story is going to change like the east is from the west. They are going to show places. If you believe it, can I hear you all out and say amen? Now, how can I speak and confess the name of Jesus and see death at the same time? When his name brings life. Jesus is the I am. It's Jehovah Jireh. Bless you. That's why I don't waste a lot of time teaching those names. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Ra. Je I, <laughs> Jesus is the name. That's above every name. Jesus is above every Jehovah name that there is. Jesus is above all those names. Jesus. Welcome to Kampala Bible Revelation Church, located at Makiri 1, Okubida Zone. Pastor Hanning, Mutokiriza, and other servants of God welcome you to a ministry based on the Word of God. We have a covenant with God for placement and multiplication according to Ezekiel 37 verse 26 to 28. Welcome to our Sunday services which impact believers with transformational revelations from the Word of God. Our Thursday midweek service is a series of teachings equipping believers with practical skills from the Word of God. Testimonies of God's goodness abound. You can also join our Doers of the Word Bible Institute where God's children have been ground into God's Word and empowered with a practical approach to transformation both spiritually and physically, totally free of charge. We are located at Makerere 1, Mukubida Zone near Makerere Business Institute along Sapaloka Gwaro. You are welcome.